Loretta Young. Ago, I met the cutest fellow. And when he asked me what I did, I just couldn't stand to see that strange look come on his face, too, when he found out I was a plumber. So I told him that I was a model. Now, this lie is getting me in deeper and deeper all the time. Have you any suggestion? You see, I'm really gone on this guy. <laughs> well, Thelma, I think maybe I have. Maybe you'll get an idea from the two people I'm going to tell you about. It all started on an ocean liner. You know, a ship's sailing has always seemed to me like a wedding. The hours of preparation by the family or crew, the excited arrival of the guests or passengers, the ceremony of embarkation, the excitement of the farewells, and then the sudden realization of being cut off and the rest of the world. All ashore, who's going ashore? All ashore, who's going ashore? All ashore, who's going ashore? I, uh, uh, I'm always bowled over by attractive gentlemen. <laughs> um, what can I do for you? That should be my question. This is my stateroom. Oh, and I'm, uh, I'm unpacking your bags? Men, things are getting a little frilly this year, don't you think? Sorry, I misread the number. <laughs> you know, I saw this whole thing on television last week. <laughs> you mean where the hero gets into the heroine's cabin by mistake on purpose? That's right. Well, it worked? Yes. Uh -huh. I'm no hero. I'm Don Hubbard. How do you do, Mr. Hubbard? The uh, MH. What does it stand for? Matter, Harry? Uh, <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> of course. What are you doing here? We were supposed to meet on deck casually. That was half an hour ago, remember? Oh. I guess I forgot. You know, Sheila, everything and everybody looks so bright and cheery. It's a beautiful world, filled with beautiful people. The heart of a humanitarian beating in the breast of a walking deck of cards. <laughs> the line sure got crossed when you were created. All right, let's get down to business. Got the list? Yeah, right here. 
Mrs. Emery Wilcox, Texas Oil, widow. Any details? Plenty. Her favorite charity is settlement houses. She loves Canasta. Thrills to be told who just can't take your eyes off her snow white hair. It's dyed. <laughs> Next. Let's see. Why don't you look it over yourself? Then I'll see you late tonight, huh? Yes. And uh, on deck. Not here. Oh, Sheila. Do me a favor, will you? Sure. Stop by the florist on your way and get two dozen roses. Here's my card. And send them to the lady in stateroom A12. That's her full name? No. No, you better make it the lovely lady in stateroom A12. Thanks, Sheila. Sure. Taking a check, Mr. Hubbard? Not at all. Sheila Ross. Oh, of course. I'm terrible with names. How have you been? Just fine, thank you. This is Mrs. Wilcox, Mr. Hubbard. Oh, Miss Wilcox, how do you do? Hello, Mr. Hubbard. Mrs. Wilcox is from Texas. From Texas? How nice. I visited there many times. Really? On business, Mr. Hubbard? Uh, not really. Charity work. I was collecting money from some of your fabulous millionaires for one of our Chicago settlement houses. Settlement house? Why, Mr. Hubbard, that's my favorite charity. Huh. We'll have to get together and talk about it sometime. Now, if you ladies will excuse me, I've just been stood up in Canasta and I'm on my... Stood up at a Canasta game? Why, Mr. Hubbard, <laughs> that's my most favorite game. I'd love to play. But, uh... Oh, goodness, is it that time already? You two will have to excuse me. Good night, Mr. Hubbard. It's been a pleasure. Mr. Wilcox? Uh -huh. Settlement houses in Canasta. That gives us two things in common, Mr. Hubbard. Three, Mrs. Wilcox. Your hair is my favorite color. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, that makes three in a row, Mr. Hubbard. You owe me a hundred and ten dollars. Fifty, a hundred, and ten. Uh, what, Mother? Not tonight, Mrs. Wilcox. Tomorrow, then. Fine. May I see you to your stateroom? Oh, no, thank you. Since we're not playing another game, I think I'll take in a movie. Well, ta-ta, Mr. Hubbard. Till tomorrow. 
So you see, the stars follow fixed constellations. Ah. Thus, we can navigate. Oh, good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Fine. I'll go on. Don't let me interrupt. Uh, Mrs. Hamilton, may I present Mr. Hubbard? Hubbard. How do you do, Mr. Hubbard? Hello, Mrs. Hamilton. <laughs> I hope you two will excuse me. Good night, Mrs. Hamilton. Surely, good night, and thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Hubbard? Oh, would you like a cigarette? Yes, I'd love one. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, roses are beautiful. Thank you very much for sending them. How, where are you going? I wish I knew. I mean, any particular port? I've been to most of them. Oh? They're all more or less alike. Except the people. They're different. I like people. Oh, yes, so do I. I think they're the real lure of travel for me. And you always stand a chance of running into that one person out of all the world, like you did. Oh. It is Mrs. Hamilton, isn't it? Husband died a year ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did I thank you for the roses? Mm -hmm. But I'd like to hear you say it again. Uh, all right. Thank you. And, uh, now I think I'd better thank you for telling me about the stars and say good night like a good girl. Tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Good night, Al. I've been looking for you. We have things to talk about, you and I. What's the matter with you? Did you get in the path of a hypnotist? Beautiful hypnotist. Sheila, I'm in love. Close your eyes. Maybe it'll go away. This is a business trip, remember? Oh, she's wonderful. Oh, I know. But for now, file her under unfinished business. We've got work to do, partner. I've dug us up a gold mine. Hub, listen to Sheila carefully. Gold mine, money, cabbage, green stuff, piles of it. Okay, I give up. If that wouldn't make you turn on your hearing aid, nothing will. I'll give you the details tomorrow. But in the meantime, just in case opportunity knocks before tomorrow, this gold mine has a name I think might interest you. Her full name is, quote, the lovely lady in stateroom A-12, unquote. Someone yells abandon ship. How about the swim we planned for this afternoon? Huh? Call her off? Oh, no, no. Let's just make it late afternoon, huh? I'm not gonna like waiting that long to see you. <laughs> you said you'd have to. We could get together without behaving like we're at the Olympic tryouts, couldn't we? Sure. What do you suggest? How about cards? Cards? You play, don't you? Yes. Canasta? Yes. Good, it's a date. I love cards. How about two o'clock? Lunch first? Of course. I beg your pardon. You have my chair. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. See you in a half hour. Yeah. Uh.
martini, please. Good evening, Mr. Howard. Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. She hasn't come in yet. <laughs> you know, the missus and I have been watching you two. Say, you took quite a pasting and canasta today, didn't you? It's always a pleasure to lose to a lovely lady. That's right, pal. And you know something? There's a lot of deep water between her and Mr. Hamilton back there in Pittsburgh, eh? Oh, but Mr. Hamilton has been dead for more than a year now. Eh, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What makes you think that Mr. Hamilton isn't dead? Oh, come on, Mr. Smith. You open this conversation and I'll close it. Okay, hey, pal, why not? Us men have got to hang together, or else we hang separately. You know, like George Washington said. It was Benjamin Franklin, and get to the point. What makes you say that Mrs. Hamilton has a husband in Pittsburgh? Well, Mrs. Hamilton got a transatlantic telephone call from him just yesterday. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks. Don't mention it. And believe me, I'm sorry I didn't. So long, pal. Sorry, I'm late, Hub. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like it? It's beautiful. I've never seen anything quite so beautiful. Well, thank you, Mr. Hubbard. May I have a cocktail? Certainly. It was cocktails, dinner, and canasta, right? Yes, that's right. Champagne cocktail. Brown, one more line than that forehead, and you're going to look like an accordion. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> My grandmother used to say, don't dare make a funny face. I freeze that way. Was that your Pittsburgh grandmother? Go on, it's your first play. <sighs> now, let me see. It's 400... And a hundred for game is five hundred, and I had forty-seven hundred, and that makes five thousand two hundred. Hub, I'm out. At a cent a point, that's fifty-two dollars. Yes. Care to try again? Oh, well, sure. Sure deal. That's it, Hub. Now, let's see, that's 5250 Roughly, that's another $52. Yeah. More? Yes, if you want to. If you give me a chance to get even, how about doubling the stakes? Double? Triple that. Oh, all right, but that's far enough. <laughs> you mix. Love to. Canasta of Jokers. Oh, that's wonderful. Ooh, keep it up. Keep it up? What side are you on, anyway? Well, it's kind of hard to say. I want to win, but I don't want you to lose. I get back $88. That leaves 16 It's a nice, tidy little sum, isn't it? May I suggest you use it for a transatlantic call to your husband in Pittsburgh? as it was just a few hours ago. Cub, I'd like to explain about Pittsburgh, what you heard, I mean. It's quite obvious, isn't it? The night, the sea, the stars. The romance of a transatlantic crossing. Why tell the first man you meet that you're married? It's a 
suppose that is what it looked like, but that wasn't it at all. I'm not married. I was, but I told you that. My husband died a year ago. You have my deepest sympathies, Mrs. Hamilton. Please, I'm trying to explain something, and you're making it so hard for me. All right, then, let's talk about Pittsburgh. People always like to talk about their hometowns. It's not my hometown. I've never even been there. I don't get it. The lies, the big act. What are you trying to prove? Well, that all seems so silly now, but I, I wanted people to think I was somebody, a pampered wife with a rich husband back home. There's something else I've got to tell you, Hal. I know. I'm so afraid you're not going to understand this. Why don't you try me and see? Oh, I, I know you're not married. What else? Well, I'm not rich, and I'm not traveling for pleasure. I'm a professional card player. Professional? Oh, I knew you'd take it like that. Hub, before you start disliking me too much, would it help to know that this is my first trip, my very first time out? Hub, you're the only person I've played with. You were going to be my first client, but... I just couldn't go on with it. Why not, Molly? Please, don't laugh. Laugh at the girl I love? Laugh at my future wife? Oh, how? Oh. Oh, one of these days, after we've been married 50 or 60 years, I'm going to tell you something about a guy named Don Hubbard. I love you. I've answered your letter in a helpful way, Thelma. A mistake, after all, is only human. The important thing is to learn from our mistakes and don't keep on repeating them. No, I don't think I'd worry too much about telling your friend the truth. A wise man once said to me, mistakes are like knives. They can either cut you or serve you, depending on how you pick them up. Good night. See you next week. <laughs>